The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. whether it's due to the genius of the great Gildersleeve or to Summerfield's rapid growth. But the fact is, the water department is flooded with business, which keeps the water commissioner on the go from early morning till late at night. Now it's early morning again. Can't you wait for your second cup of coffee, Miss Gildersleeve? No, thank you, Bertie. I have to be on the move. I'm late at the office now. Yes, sir. You want to drink your coffee on your way out and leave the cup in the mailbox again? I'll bring it back. No, Bertie. Why don't you take the cups of town with you and mail it back? All right, Leroy. Now, where's my coat? I'll get your hat, Auntie. Thank you, Marjorie. I hold it back. That's the spirit, Bertie. Here's your chapeau. Chapeau? Oh, hat. (laughs) It's too bad you don't even have time to enjoy your breakfast. Yeah, it's my own fault. I worked so late last night, I just overslept. Guards open! Coming, Bertie. Auntie, you didn't shave this morning. I know. And I'll try to find a few minutes later this morning and run down to Floyd's barber shop. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Auntie. So long, Marge. I gotta get to school. Leroy, I'll drop you by. I'll walk. I'm in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a hurry, too. Come along. Excuse me, we you get home for lunch? No, Bertie, I'll grab a candy bar. Get one for me, Auntie. We'll see. Auntie, you forgot your briefcase. Details. Leroy, will you run back and get my briefcase? Okay, you hold my books. All right. Eight books. Your walking library. But he hasn't opened any of them. Nope. They're slipping. <laughs> they would fall under the car. <laughs> Got it. Here's your briefcase, huh? What happened? I dropped your arithmetic. I wish I could drop arithmetic that easy. <laughs> yes, yes. Climb in the car. The seats are cold. Why did you leave the car outside, Unc? Last night I was too tired to put it in the garage. I should have walked. (laughs) Not yet, Bertie. I knew I should have walked. (laughs) Darn old car. Leroy, don't antagonize it. Leroy, I know what to do. Just for you, Mr. Gilsey, you got it started. I can't hear you, Bertie. I said just for you, you got it started. Can't hear her. I'll have to turn it off. <laughs> what is it, Bertie? I said just for you, you got it started. Yofer. <laughs> no wonder I'm behind at the office. I can't even get there. In luck. Nobody in the barber shop. I can get a quick shave and get back to work. Hello, Floyd. Hi, Commish. Come in. Am I next for a shave, Floyd? Well, I wasn't planning to shave the broom. <laughs> Hop up in the chair. I thought you may have had an appointment, Floyd. Ah, oh, you're the first customer I had today. Business a little slow? Yeah, but I like it this way. Gives me a chance to read and think. You? Yeah, is that what you've been doing all morning? Well, I've been reading. Yes, yes. And I've been doing some thinking, too. I've been thinking I might sell the barber shop. Sell the shop? Sure, I got a standing offer. Just ain't standing high enough. 
But I may take it. I ain't proud. Floyd, you're not serious. On the level, Commission. Since that fancy shop opened across the street, my income ain't up to my outgo. <laughs> That's too bad. Yeah, competition's pretty tough. He's got six chairs and a bucking bronco. Bucking bronco? Yeah, wooden horse to set the kids on while he gives them a hoppy haircut. <laughs> oh, yes, I've seen it. He even put in a television set. Drove the barbers crazy trying to cut hair during a tennis match. But it brought in the business. <laughs> Floyd, I'm sorry to hear things aren't so good. Ah, oh, well, I ain't worried. My wife, Lovey's been wanting to take a job. She likes to eat lunches downtown. Does your wife ever work, Floyd? Yeah, she used to work for the telephone company. I like to kid her about how I took her away from Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> Operator, was she? Yeah. First time I talked to her, she gave me a wrong number. <laughs> well, let's hurry it up, Floyd. I have a pile of work waiting for me at the office. Well, I'll have you out in a jiffy. I... Say, I was just thinking, Kamish. Anything Lovey could do down there? You're down where, Floyd? At the water department. The kids are wizards at dressing envelopes, putting on stamps, <laughs> stuff like that. Well, I need somebody, Floyd. But she but... can run an ad machine. You want to see her punch them buttons. She uses all her fingers. Yeah, I mainly need somebody to do odd jobs. Answer the phone. That's for Lovey, the telephone. When she worked for the company, she was elected Miss Number Please of 1935. How about it, Commish? Well, I suppose I could use her. Hey, that's swell. You won't regret it, Commish. She's really deficient. <laughs> You're fine, Floyd. Send Lovey down in the morning. <laughs> Sure, that's what I need. A little help at the office. And I'll be helping Floyd and Lovey, too. It makes me feel good. Say, before I go back to the office, I think I'll stop in at Peavy's for that candy box. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? You, Peavy, I'm so busy at the office, I won't get out for lunch, so I'd better buy a candy box. Oh, mm, yeah, well. I, uh, have some new ones. Do you want a sludgy pudgy or a nudgy mudgy? <laughs> well, hey, which one smells so good? It, the ham. A ham bar, Peavy? No, no, the baked ham on the sandwich counter. Say, it looks good. Make me a combination sandwich with some of that, Peavy. You mean ham between candy bars? <laughs> no, Peavy, combination ham and cheese. It's a little early, but I'll eat it now so I won't have to waste time unwrapping candy bars at the office. Yeah, I'm thinking of ways to save time, Pete. <laughs> my, my. My office is bursting at the seams. Reports, estimates, expansion plans, new subdivisions. Everybody's looking to me for water. Are you really that busy, or are you just gilding the water, Lily? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Pete. Now, I'm actually busy this time. In fact, I just hired Floyd's wife. How's that? Floyd's wife. You know. What's her name? Oh, you mean the lady who's known as Lovey? That's right. Lovey. You must be busy. Uh, here's your sandwich, Mr. Gildersleeve. Thanks. You know, I just had to get help somewhere. What do you think about my hiring Lovey? Well, after you've hired her, it's hardly the time you think about it. What do you mean, Petey? Mr. Gildersleeve, I never thought it a good idea to hire the wife of a friend. What's wrong with that? We have plenty of jobs around town if Mrs. Munson wants to work. Why shouldn't she work for me? Well, what do you say to the wife of a friend if she's late to work in the morning? What do I say? What does your friend say to you when his wife works overtime and can't get home to fix his dinner? Well, uh, he'll say more than that. You <laughs> <laughs> this situation is different, Petey. Yes, it always is. Floyd's having trouble making ends meet since that new shop moved in across the street. Mm, yeah. You thought he was going to work someplace. I figure I'm doing a good turn. Mm, yeah. And I need help at the department, so work-wise and friendship-wise. It's probably the smartest move I ever made. Mm, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, posh. You'll see, Petey. Peavy 
was all wrong yesterday. Nothing wrong with hiring the wife of a friend, especially a good friend like Floyd. He's a fine fellow, down to earth. Of course, from what I know of Lovey, she's a little on the gabby side. Oh, well, I'll keep her busy. Yeah, nearly nine o'clock. Hope she comes to work on time. Yeah, I'll show Petey. Where's my office key? Say, door's unlocked. Boo! Lovey! Yeah, I mean, Mrs. Munson. <laughs> Did I scare you, Mr. Gildersleeve? You jumped a foot. <laughs> well, I didn't expect you to jump at me from behind the door. Hi, Commish. Floyd! <laughs> My wife's a great little kid, huh? Well, how'd you two get in? I jolly the janitor into giving me the key. Oh. Come on in. Make yourself at home, Commish. <laughs> Look who's talking with his feet propped on my desk. I'm not opening the barber shop till 9.30, so I thought I'd drop the little woman by. Oh, you sure got a swell office, Chief. Chief? Uh, don't you like Chief? Well, why don't you be ritzy? Call him Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Now, Floyd. I got it. I'll call you like us girls used to call the boss at the phone company by his initial. From now on, you're T.P. T.P.? Oh, my goodness. Here, Commish, take your chair and tell Lovey what to do and where to go. I may have to. <laughs> oh, it sure is nice of you to put me on the payroll, T.P. When Floyd came home last night and told me, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Yeah, she didn't believe it. The water department, she says. Are you kidding, she says. And when we came to the office this morning, I still thought he was kidding. Is this really the water department, T.P.? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Well, where's all the pipes? <laughs> well, the pipes and things are underground. The water doesn't run through the office. Yeah, that's lovey for you, Commish. She takes everything literary. It's one of her idiosyncrasies. <laughs> <laughs> idiosyncrasies? Yep. You can explain all this stuff to me as we go along, T.P. I catch on quick. Yes, well... Did you ever run a telephone switchboard? No, Oh, but... you ought to see Lovey at a switchboard. She can light that thing up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> Me, I wouldn't get near one. Yes, like well... Like fighting an octopus. <laughs> well, we have a lot of work to do, Mrs. Munson. I guess you're the one to do it. Now, if you'll come over here, I'll explain the operation of the billing machine. Oh, I could have had a job at Hogan Brothers in the kitchenware. But I told him I saw enough pots and pans at home. That's what I like about being in water. It's a clean. <laughs> Oh, brother. Now, Mrs. Munson, about the billing machine. Yeah, lovey, pay attention. Another thing I don't like about these big department stores is punching them time clocks. That's adulterated nuisance, T.P. Oh? Well, apparently a time clock isn't necessary in your case. You were prompt this morning. <laughs> you should have seen us getting out of the house. We was flying. Now, about the billing machine. Yeah, I was so anxious to get down here on time, I didn't get a chance to eat breakfast. Now that I've checked in, how about me going out for coffee and donuts? Yeah, coffee and just... Well, I guess the billing machine can wait. Sure. Come on, lovey. Let's see. I'll be back in a jiffy, T.T. Oh, by the way, I know the T stands for Throckmorton, but I don't know what the P stands for. Yeah, I know. Pigeon. <laughs> Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. One of the easiest ways you'll find to brighten up any meal is to serve a colorful, tempting salad. Here's a wonderful fruit salad that's made with pineapple and peach slices. For each serving, place a drained pineapple slice on a bed of crispy lettuce. Then on the pineapple, arrange four well-drained slices of peach in pinwheel style and top it all off with a spoonful of Miracle Whip salad dressing and a maraschino cherry. There, it's pretty, it's easy, and you can be sure it'll taste especially good thanks to Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip gives salad such wonderful flavor, a lively, teasing flavor that's peppy, yet not a bit too sharp. It's a flavor most folks call just exactly right. And it's a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing because Miracle Whip is actually a different kind of salad dressing made from an exclusive craft recipe to give you the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. Treat your family to colorful, tempting salads often. And to make them better tasting, make them with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Remember, there's only one Miracle Whip, and it's made only by Kraft. <laughs> Well, 
let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Yesterday, under pressure of work and out of sympathy for his friend Floyd the barber, the water commissioner hired Floyd's wife, Lovey. Already, his little family is wondering if he did the smart thing. Hey, I'm late for breakfast. We had a hard day at the office, Leroy. Miss Marsha, I thought Mr. Gilfley wouldn't have to work so hard after he got some help. Well, I'm not so sure Mrs. Munson's going to be a help, Bertie. Now he's working twice as hard. <laughs> she sure is a talker. Oh, do you know her? I do now. I called the office yesterday and she answered the phone. Oh? I not only know her, I know about everybody else in town. And all I asked was what Mr. Gilfrey wanted to send to the cleaners, and she had everybody else's laundry. <laughs> yeah? What's the dope, Bertie? Now, Leroy, we don't listen to gossip. Bertie, I didn't know Mrs. Munson gossiped. Oh, she didn't say it was gossip. She was just repeating what other people told her. Hey, Miss Marjorie, did you know that Miss Athanasi bought a new dishwasher a- a- on the installment plan, and her husband made her send it back, and now she makes him do the dishes? No, really, Bertie, when did that happen? Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> we don't listen to gossip. Well, before I could find out when it happened, she started talking about something else. Miss Marge, you know she calls Mr. Gilfley? What, Bertie? <laughs> she calls him T.P. <laughs> T.P.? What does she think Aunt is, an Indian? <laughs> That's for Clark Morton T. His initials, Leroy. Ha oh, ha, oh, yeah. Poor Unky. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Miss Gilfley. Good morning, Unky. Hi, T.P. Leroy. Oh. <laughs> Where'd you hear that? Oh, gossip. Uh, excuse me, I'll go get your breakfast. Unky, we understand Mrs. Munson calls you T.P. Well, yes. Do you call her Lovey? <laughs> no, Leroy. I call her Mrs. Munson. And I wish she'd call me Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, why don't you tell her, Unky? Well, she's not easily told. I'm afraid I made a slight mistake, children. I suppose I did hire on impulse, but my snap judgment has always been so good. Now your judgment's snapping back at you. (laughs) But she may work out all right. She's giddy. She accomplished quite a little when she finally settled down. When was that? About a quarter of five. (laughs) Here comes the pancakes and parquet. Mmm, looks good. Thank you, sir. And here's your coffee. Unky, if Mrs. Munson is like you say she is, maybe she'll lose interest and quit. That's a pleasant prospect. Yeah, maybe some morning she won't show up. She has been offered other jobs, and water can interest a person only so long. Sure, I take a bath and then forget it. (laughs) Yes, sir. If I know Lovey, uh, Mrs. Munson, she won't be with us long. She'll flit someplace else like a happy hummingbird. Miss Gilfley, there's a hummingbird outside. Who? Isn't it a little early? Not for this one. It's Miss Munson. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why is she coming by here? You! Anybody up? You! We're up, Mrs. Munson. Come in. She's already in. <laughs> Drop by and take you to work, T.P. T.P. Leroy. <laughs> well, Mrs. Munson. I... Hello, Leroy. Hi. And Marjorie, how are you? I haven't seen you since you had the twins. You're looking just grand, honey. Well, thank you. Hello, Bertie. Good morning, Miss Munson. Where's your handsome husband, Marjorie? Oh, he goes to work early. Why, T.P., you're still right in the middle of breakfast. Come on, let's get the waterworks going. Well, thanks for offering me the ride, but I'll be down a little later. Well, if you're not in any hurry, I may as well have a cup of coffee. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Munson. Won't you join us? Oh, thank you, honey. Anything in the pot, Bertie? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'll go get you a cup. Wonderful. Get two cups, will you, Bertie? Two? Floydie and I left home without breakfast again. Floydie! Turn off the motor, honey! Coffee! <laughs> mm, something has to be done about this. to get out of the office this morning. I had to, Petey. Did you hire Mrs. Munson? Yep. And it isn't working out. I never should have hired the wife of a friend. I should have taken your advice. Well, I'm sorry. Thanks. Petey, I'm glad you're not the type who says I told you so. (laughs) You didn't give me a chance. (laughs) 
TV, how am I going to get Lovey out of the office? I can't fire her. I don't want to hurt Floyd's feelings. Oh, I know. I yeah, wouldn't have hired his wife in the first place, but I didn't want Floyd to have to sell his barber shop. Well, it's a delicate situation. A few years ago, I had a clerk I couldn't get rid of. You did? Mm, he was a great one for eating. He used to sample everything at the soda fountain. Ate up all the profit. How'd you get rid of him, Phoebe? Well, I had a little private chat with his wife. I told her the reason he ate so much was because he worked too hard. Who? Of course, that was a little fib, Mr. Gildersby, but she made him quit the job. Yeah, that's an idea, Phoebe. You didn't have any trouble finding other work, did he? Oh, no. He caught on at a machine shop. Nuts and bowls. <laughs> I bet he isn't eating the profits now. Describe <laughs> George Peavy. Why don't I talk to Floyd and tell him the job at the water department is too much for loving? Well, husbands don't like it when their wives work too hard, unless it's around the house. Peavy, this time I'm going to take your advice. My worries are over. <laughs> Floyd's in the shop. Yeah, there he is. Tilted back in his chair, reading a magazine. What a barber. Hello, Floyd. Huh? Oh, hi, Commish. What are you doing out this time of the morning? Now that you got Lovey running the office, you're a free man, huh? Not exactly, Floyd. You out reading meters? No. I walked over here because you're a friend of mine. And I have your interests at heart. Oh, yeah? What's up? Well, to tell you the truth, Floyd... I'm a little concerned about Lovey. Yeah, I mean your wife's health. No kidding. You rather than mention it to your wife, Floyd. I thought I'd come to you. Oh, yeah? What's the trouble, Commish? Well, there's too much work at the office for her. I don't think she can stand the pressure. Are you kidding? Lovey's strong as a horse. And that may be, Floyd. But everybody has a breaking point. Well, that ain't like Lovey. That kid's got an iron institution. <laughs> I don't doubt that. But there's so much work to do up there, if she ever does it. It'll endanger her health. It will, huh? She's developing nerves, Floyd. Nerves. See, that's funny. Lovey ain't never been the nervy type. She is now very nervy. You really think she's cracking, huh? I think she's already cracked. Huh? <laughs> that's probably why she goes out for so much coffee no. in movie magazines. She's trying to escape all that work. But, Commish, she's only been at the waterworks two days, hardly long enough to get her feet wet. She might pull out of it. You're all right, Floyd. Don't say I didn't warn you. But if you don't care about Lovey... I love Lovey. Well, why don't you do something about it before she's a total wreck? Well, gee, it's a cinch. I don't want no wreck around the house. <laughs> I'll see if I can't handle it, Commish. Can you handle it today, please? Well, I'll be by before you close the office. Good for you, Floyd. See, I'm sorry the job's too much for Lovey. I even had envisions of her being the first woman water commissioner. Lovey? Yep, and who knows? From there, she might become one of them female business typhoons. <laughs> See you at the office, Floyd, and make it soon. Duplicating machine should keep Lovey busy until Floyd gets here. It's 4.30 now. You want any more copies when I finish this batch, T.P.? Oh, almost finished, are you, Mrs. Munson? Sure, I'm rolling now. What's next? Well, you might take these water bills on my desk and put them in envelopes. Sure thing. Say, what's this you wrote on this bill? Oh, that's just a way of greeting new customers. Welcome into the fold, honey. Mrs. Munson, what's the idea? Well, when you're sending them bills to pay, you've got to be nice to them. You but... When you're billing, what's wrong with a little cooing? <laughs> I hardly think the mayor would approve of being so chummy with the customers. I'll, I'll answer it. You're yeah, fine. Well, i find some more work for you. Water department, Hello. Yeah, he's here, Mr. Mayor. You met Williger? And you're lucky to find him in. He's been out all day. <laughs> all right, sure. Sure, sure, I'll relay the message. Thanks for calling, kiddo. Oh, kiddo. <laughs> Mrs. Bunsen, that was the mayor. I know it. 
Oh, well, Floyd will be here soon and take her away. What was the message, Mrs. Munson? Um... Oh, that's funny. I forgot. Oh, <laughs> yes. Very funny. Now, now, what did you want me to do, T.P.? Uh, well, we still have to put the bills in the envelopes. But please, no greetings. Check. And there's filing to do and reports to check. Check. And letters to write. Right. Oh, brother. Hiya, lovey. Floydy. Hi, Commish. Floyd, am I glad to see you. I had a lot of wheels turning since I saw you, Commish. Good. I bet you came to take me out for a cup of coffee, Floydy. You wait, Mrs. Munson. I think Floyd has something to say. Yeah. I had to make a big decision, lovey. The Commish tells me there's too much work here for you. Yeah, I only had your interest at heart, Mrs. Munson. <laughs> What's this all about? You come to the point, Floyd. We'll all try to take it big. Well, Commish... Since there's too much work for Lovey, I decided to take that offer I had for the barber shop. You sold your shop? Yep. And out of appreciation of all you've done, I'm coming down here to help you and Lovey out. <laughs> oh, Floyd, you're going to work here with me? Yep. Where you work, I work. You've been flying. Commish, Lovey and me are insufferable. <laughs> well, I'll say they are. What have I done to deserve this? The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. The next time you need a main dish for a luncheon, how about serving a shrimp salad? And to make it really delicious, make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip will give it just the lively flavor you want, not too sharp and yet not too mild. Miracle Whip has a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. Get a jar of Miracle Whip from your grocer tomorrow and make all your salads better tasting than ever with America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. <laughs> What's the matter? Aren't you tired? Leroy, I'm exhausted. Dinner's on the table, Anki. Aren't you going to eat? I don't think so. I just want to sit quietly and not hear any voices. I've had all I can take for one day. Mrs. Munson didn't leave then. No. No, I have Floyd in the office helping her. I have to get there early in the morning to have a place to sit. <laughs> well, relax, Anki. You can have it nice and quiet here. Yeah, I tore out of the office so fast tonight, I forgot my hat. All I wanted was to get home. Oh, poor auntie. Shall I get you slippers? Thank you, my dear. Oh, thank heavens a man can come home and find sanctuary. Hide from the world and all the trouble. You, T.P.? Oop, it's her. <laughs> Floyd and I are here. You left your hat at the office. Trapped again. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Gail Bonney, and Dick Legrand. Music composed by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of those famous Kraft quality foods. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further developments in the life of the Great Gildersleeve. Boy Scout Week begins today. This week, the Boy Scouts of America are celebrating their 42nd anniversary. More than ever before, men of good character are needed to serve as Cubmasters, Scoutmasters, and Explorer Advisors. Here's your chance to do something about curbing juvenile delinquency in your community. With more unit leaders, the Boy Scouts of America can enroll more boys in their program of training for good citizenship. During Boy Scout Week, offer your services. Volunteer to your local Boy Scout headquarters. Find out how you can help. Tonight, be sure to hear the Robert Montgomery News Program on NBC.